Chief Secretary, uh, thank you, members of the fourth state. Uh, cabinet uh, discussed and considered and approved a number of issues as follows. The first being the national policy for the care and protection of children without parental care, which was presented by the Honorable Vice President, uh, Comrade KCD Mohadi, who is also the chairman of the cabinet Committee on Social Services and Poverty Eradication. The overall goal of the national policy for the care and protection of children without parental care is to facilitate the comprehensive development of all children by ensuring that their needs and rights are adequately met. The policy seeks, among other things, to promote and enhance safe, protective, and stable environments for children without parental care. It caters for the rehabilitation of children in specialized alternative care facilities, including those with disabilities. Children in conflict with the law, children removed from the streets, child survivors of drug and substance abuse, and children in formal and informal alternative care. The policy aims at ensuring that all children in alternative care placements in Zimbabwe, regardless of the place, context, and duration, enjoy their rights as enshrined in the Constitution of Zimbabwe. It will ensure that children in alternative care receive basic services in form of education, health, justice, food, clothes, shelter, life skills, and sustainable livelihoods. The national policy for the care and protection of children without parental care outlines minimum standards for alternative care, including the following, that children should have their needs assessed comprehensively with written placement care plans, which outline how the needs will be met, that there be identification of the children and that the children should maintain constructive and safe conduct with their families, friends, and other people who play a significant role in their lives and that children should be able to move in and out of care in an appropriate manner. Children should also get the necessary support to enable them to prepare to leave care and transition into adulthood, while being encouraged to express their views, wishes, and opinions on matters that affect them. A whole of government approach will be adopted in the implementation of the policy in order to ensure that the rights of the children are adequately protected. Non-state actors will complement government efforts in the provision of specialized services in line with their registered mandates. Cabinet considered and approved the draft Zimbabwe Intergovernmental Fiscal Transfer Administrative Manual is presented by the Minister of Finance, Economic Development and Investment Promotion, Honorable Professor Mtuli Mure. The Intergovernmental Fiscal Transfer from central to lower tiers of government is provided in terms of the Constitution of Zimbabwe. And these transfers are meant to support the devolution of powers and responsibilities with not less than 5% of national reserves and revenues raised in any financial year being allocated to provinces and uh, local authorities. Uh, these transfers are meant to support the devolution of powers and responsibilities with not less than 5% 
of national revenues raised in any financial year being allocated to provinces and local authorities. The manual provides the necessary regulatory framework in order to ensure equitable fiscal transfers to local tiers of the government and the seamless implementation of the devolution agenda. Cabinet notes that the manual will ensure proper administration of the financial resources allocated to lower tiers of government by providing clarity on revenue sharing and allocation. Financial management, institutional framework for managing intergovernmental fiscal transfers, other matters related to fiscal transfers and monitoring and evaluation. The manual offers a practical and operational guide to the use of intergovernmental fiscal transfers and the roles played by the various parties involved in the administration of the funds. The Minister of Local Government and Public Works, Honorable Daniel Garwe, presented the 2024 El Nino-induced drought, domestic and international appeal for assistance by His Excellency the President, Dr. Idim Nangagwa, which was adopted by cabinet. His Excellency the President, Comrade Idim Nangagwa, declared a state of disaster on the 3rd of April, 2024. The declaration was made in terms of section 27, subsection one of the Civil Protection Act as a result of the prevalent drought brought about by the El Nino weather phenomenon. The state of disaster exists in all rural and urban areas in Zimbabwe. The appeal is premised on three areas, namely search and rescue, mitigation and resilience building. Search and rescue involves the identification and provision of assistance to beneficiaries, while its mitigation relates to the measures put in place in order to avert the impact of the El Nino induced drought. Resilience pertains to initiatives aimed at strengthening community capacities for sustainable livelihoods in order to cope with the disaster. A full appeal statement will be issued in due course. Cabinet also received reports on progress made in the implementation of priority projects for the first 100 day cycle of 2024 as presented by the ministers of ICT, Postal and Courier Services, Minister of Finance, Economic Development and Investment Promotion. The Minister of ICT, Postal and Courier Services, Honorable Tatenda Mavetera, reported progress on projects under her purview as follows. 1,000 people were equipped with digital skills and the remaining 200 will be equipped by 15 May 2024. 2,500 records have been digitized. The development of the government applications procurement framework is on course for completion by 15 May 2024. The deployment of ICT equipment to 100 marginalized schools is on course with 40 schools having received the equipment and the remaining 60 will receive the equipment by 15 May 2024. 14 ICT enabled disaster management centers were established. 52 base stations were deployed across provinces and the installation of a wireless radio base station in Mashingo was completed. The installation of Internet Escodini Agricultural College was completed. The establishment of an ICT vocational training center was completed and handed over to Marondera Female Open Prison. The refurbishment of post offices at Sanzaguru and Toad was completed. Site surveys for the long-term evolution project in Chitungwiza were completed and equipment was delivered. And the Bulawa Victoria Falls Kazungula Fiber Optic Backbone Project is on course for completion by the 15th of May, 2024. The Minister of Finance, Economic Development and Investment Promotion, Honorable Professor Mtulinuve, reported progress on projects under his purview as follows. 
the timely and adequate disbursement of employment costs and social benefits was completed. The domestic and external resource mobilization is ongoing. Policy reform matrices for debt area clearance were finalized and implementation has commenced. The United Nations Economic Commission for Africa Conference was successfully hosted. The implementation of the international public sector accounting standards is ongoing and the introduction of the new currency was accomplished. Cabinet was also appraised on progress made in the country's preparations to host the 44th SADC Summit of Heads of State and Government in August 2024, as presented by the Honorable Vice President, Dr. CGD N. Chuenga. Considerable progress has been achieved in the rehabilitation of roads to the new parliament. The bulk of the preparatory work is underway and the project will be implemented and completed within the scheduled timeframes. Plans are foot to beautify the city of Harare from the Robert Gabriel Mugabe airport to the new city. The private sector, including small and medium enterprises, is encouraged to participate in the various committees involved in preparations for the successful hosting of the summit. I thank you. Thank you very much.